In a competitive global market, every country must build the educational pillars that will support its well-being. And in the 21st century, STEM education is undoubtedly one of those pillars. Occupations related to science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM fields help to drive innovation and economic growth in the U.S. Across industries and geographic markets, employees with technical know-how create new offerings, improve processes, and fuel growth. Behind these employees is STEM education, an agent of transformation in our nation's economy and our quality of life. So if you look at the growth, the GDP for our nation, any nation, it's increasingly dependent upon the technology. Um, technology is a driver for economic development. There are estimates today that somewhere between 15 to 25 percent of what's going on in almost any country's economy, more so in ours and the developed nation, is driven by the science and the technology that is there. The importance of technical education is easily found in the numbers. By 2018, nine out of 10 traditional STEM jobs will require some post-secondary education and training, according to the National Math and Science Initiative. Working to meet this educational need are schools like the New Jersey Institute of Technology. A leading public technological university, NJIT, has been dedicated to educating the technical workforce for more than 130 years. The university serves about 10,000 undergraduate and graduate students each year in programs such as engineering, computer sciences, life sciences, and architecture and design. It also facilitates lifelong learning for STEM professionals. NGIT has provided training to 75,000 private company employees since 1990. The thing that I got out of coming from NJIT is how do you solve a problem? How do you look at a problem and break it down into workable pieces? Your clients will need things that are specific to their needs. The basics of what we learn is what we can build upon and do the problem solving. To spur economic growth, STEM universities must produce graduates who are equipped to meet real-world challenges. The leaders at NJIT believe students must be fully engaged in the STEM disciplines to be prepared to transform companies and industries. The university takes a multidisciplinary approach to education in which students work alongside professors in labs, research centers, and design studios. This work combined with classroom instruction allows students to study the processes of their fields, learn to think critically, and determine how to apply theory to the practical problems they will encounter on the job. So students can get involved in research at many different levels. So they can start as an undergraduate as early as their freshman year and perform independent study in various faculty members' labs. Uh, they can do this during the academic year. They can do this over the summer. Uh, this can be paid or unpaid research opportunities, but it gives the student an opportunity to get some hands-on skills in a research area, they get to learn new techniques, and these can be cutting edge tools or techniques that they would then use in industry. Beyond their role in the workforce deployment, STEM schools can strengthen the economy by commercializing research and supporting business development. NJIT, named a top national university by US News and World Report, and ranked in the top 1% nationally for return on investment by Payscale.com, has nearly $110 million in annual research expenditures and has received 187 U.S. patents. The university also operates one of the largest business incubators in the country, focused on high technology and life sciences. The Enterprise Development Center houses about 90 companies that employ 800 people and have drawn some $67 million in third-party funding. For a STEM school, having a business incubator really serves a couple of purposes. On the one hand, 
We are developing technology from our faculty and students, and by having a business incubator on campus provides a place where potentially the technologies that we're developing could be licensed to those companies and moved along the commercialization path. Additionally, students themselves as well as faculty are interested in thinking about and exploring the opportunities to start up businesses. And so having a facility on campus makes it easy for them to explore those opportunities. Because we know that most of the job growth today in the, in the United States is really driven by startups and small businesses. So that this is really something that we're seeing students are becoming more interested in exploring as career paths. In the coming years, Technical education will continue to be a foundation for success for individuals, industries, and countries, helping to spark innovation and promote economic stability. And universities like the New Jersey Institute of Technology will continue to guide students toward the opportunities of the future. Years ago, we thought that, well, we need to get our students out of college to be interested. But the more we, we look at this, we feel that we have to go younger and younger. We approach the high school students, and now in the middle schools, we introduce engineering to those younger students to get them sort of interested in what we do and how we do it. Unfortunately, the pipeline in STEM in this nation is too small. If you look at some of our competing countries, uh, the STEM students are 12, 15, even 20% in some of the developing countries, 30% of the graduating class. In this nation, it's under 10%. So we start with this narrow pipeline. We need to ensure that we give them the support services so that they can graduate. So they stay here, we retain them, and they graduate. To learn more about New Jersey Institute of Technology, visit the school's website at www.go.njit.edu.